it's Jennifer from Fiber Flux. Welcome back to week two of the 2020 Spring Crochet Along. We are making the Blue Skies Granny Tee. As you can see here, it is a lovely little shirt for warmer weather. Now, if it's chilly, you could also put some long sleeves under this as well. It's very versatile. We have our neck opening, our little sleeves, and we have like a little tunic bottom with like a split. And so what we're gonna be doing is week one, uh, we talked last week, we talked about the supplies. So just as a refresher, we're, I'm using Karen Simply Soft and I'm using a five millimeter H crochet hook. You'll also need a pair of scissors and a tapestry needle for today. Now what we're gonna be doing today is if you're just joining us, this is actually our, our little tee is two granny squares that we've sandwiched together. And later on next week, we're going to be seaming this together um, in the different spots and leaving certain spots open so you can wear it. But today we're just going to learn how to make a solid granny square. You're going to need two of these, one for the front and one for the back. And then next week we're going to be seaming everything together. And then the week after that, we're going to learn how to extend our shirt so it makes more of like a tunic style. And I have made it in rows, so we do have this little bit of an ease. So when you sit down, it, it kind of gives or bend over or something like that. So let's jump right in and learn how to do the granny squares this week. To begin, we're going to put a slip knot on our hook. Now let me zoom in so you can see this up close. What you want to do is wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop, bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, bring up the loop, and tighten. Next, we're going to chain four. So to make a chain, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, and four. The next thing we need to do is make a ring that we're gonna be working our stitches into. So we're going to join with a slip stitch in the farthest chain from our hook. That was that first chain that we made. So go back to that first chain, insert the hook into that chain, bring up a loop. Now bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. And now we have the ring that we want to work into. So you can kind of open it up a little bit because we're going to be working a bunch of stitches in there. And then this tail we can hold along the edge as we work to weave it in as we go along. The other thing I wanted to mention is a lot of you ask if you can alternatively use the magic ring technique. You can totally, absolutely do that here. So what we want to do first is chain three. This is round one of our granny square. So one, two, three. Then we're going to work two double crochets into the center of the ring. So to make a double crochet, wrap yarn around hook, insert the hook into the center of the ring, bring up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. Then work another double crochet into the center of the ring. So that chain three we did at the beginning of the round counts as one of our double crochets. So you have this little cluster of three here. Then we're going to chain one. Then we're gonna work three double crochets into the center of the ring. So one, Two, still holding that tail along the edge. And three. We get a little bit more yarn here. And then, again, we're still holding that tail. Let me just get everything set back up. After you do your three double crochets, you can slide things over a bit to give yourself some more room. Then chain one. Then work three more double crochet. One, two, whoops, let me just back up my yarn. Sometimes uh, yarn might split a little bit. So that was one, and then this is two, and then three. And then chain one, slide things over. And now let's work the last little grouping here. We're going to have a total of four. It's going to make a little like plus sign when we're done. And I'll show you what I mean by that in just a minute. So work three double crochet. One, two, three. And then chain one. And now we're at the end of the round. So what you want to do is count three chains up. One, two, three. And join with a slip stitch to close the round just like that. 
So it kind of looks like a circle at this point, totally normal and fine. But as we start to kind of go into those, remember those chain one spaces that we did? We, when we start to go into those chain one spaces, um, see there was one, there's another, you can start to see that it makes like a little plus sign, okay? Now, we're not quite in the right spot. If you're changing colors, you can simply cut the yarn and fasten off and tie the new yarn into any color, but we're sticking with the same color here. So we're, we need to get over to that first chain one space over here. So what we need to do is slip stitch over, okay? That will get us in the right spot to begin the next round. So what we're gonna do is insert the hook into that first stitch, bring up a loop, bring that loop through the loop already on our hook, go into the next stitch, slip stitch into that, Go into that next one, slip stitch into that. Okay, now we're at the right spot. We're at that chain one space. So what we're gonna do to begin round two is chain three, one, two, three. Then we're gonna work two double crochets because remember that chain three counts as one of our double crochets. So we're only gonna work two double crochets for this group. So one and two, push things over. And then in that same space, we're gonna chain one and then work three more double crochet. That's gonna create the first corner of our square. So three double crochet, one, two, and three. Then we're gonna chain one, then we're gonna hop over to the next space. So skip that next grouping of three double crochets and go to that next chain one space. And we're gonna do the same thing. This time we're gonna work three double crochet. One, two, three. Chain one, then three more double crochet all in that same space. One, two, and three. Now, chain one again. I think I split again. There we go, chain one. Now hop over, skipping that next grouping, hop over to that next chain one space and we're gonna do the same thing. Three double crochet, one, two, three, chain one, and then three more double crochet. One, two, three. Work another chain one, skip over that next grouping, and then work your last corner of round two, okay? So we're once again gonna work three double crochet, one, two, three. Chain one, and then three more double crochet, one, two, three. Now we're gonna chain one and we're done with the round, so we need to join. So count three chains up, one, two, three. Insert the hook, we're gonna join with a slip stitch. Insert the hook into that chain, bring up a loop. Now bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. And round two is complete. So we're starting to get a nice little square here. And I like to kind of sharpen up those corners Get everything nice and defined looking. It's, it's easier to work into them when you can see everything clearly. So once again, we're going to, now before we start, uh, let's do this. Let's pull this center tail so it's not hanging out in our way. Pull it nice and tight. Grab your scissors and just give it a little trim. That way it'll be out of your way. All right, let's go back to our square. We're gonna start round three. Now round three is the round that you'll repeat for the rest of your square. It's very easy if you've never made a granny square, it's, and they're so fun. They're one of my most favorite things to make. Um, but for round three, we're going to start working. Now before, if you notice, we just did four corners. Okay, we worked four corners. Our, our corners will always be worked the same way. Now we're going to start adding sides. So when we do our next round, we're going to do corner, side, corner, side, corner, side, corner, side. In rounds after that, you'll just uh, have more corner spaces as you go on and on and on and on. And we'll talk about that a little bit more once we complete this round and you can see what I mean. So again, we need to slip stitch over to the correct spot. That first chain one space is where you want to slip stitch over to. 
So just work your slip stitches over. And if you notice I worked in the back loops, it kind of keeps it out of the way. Um, you don't have to do that. It's totally a personal uh, choice. But I like them to be sort of uh, camouflaged a little bit. So what we want to do once again is chain three. One, two, three. And again, that counts as one of our double crochets. You start every round the same way. And you're going to work two double crochets into that corner space. One, and two, pushing things over, chain one, work three more double crochets into that corner space. One, two, and three. Chain one, now we're at our first side. So sides are just three double crochet, chain one. So go right into that side space and work three double crochet. One, two, and three, chain one. Now we're going to go into a corner. So our corners are worked the same way we've been doing them. Three double crochet, one, two, three, chain one, and in the same space, three more double crochet. One, two, and three. Chain one, now we're at another side, so work three double crochet, one, two, and three. Chain one, go over to our next corner, same thing, three double crochet, one, two, three, whoops, there we go chain one and three double crochet. One, two, three, chain one, and we're at a side again. So hopefully you'll start to see that we're doing corner side, corner side. And our square is growing already. Chain one, we did our three double crochet, chain one, Next corner, three double crochet, one, two, three, chain one, same space, three more double crochet, one, two, and three. Chain one. We are in the home stretch. We have one more side. So go ahead and work your three double crochet, one, two, three, chain one, and then we're going to join to close. So count three chains up, join with a slip stitch to close. Same thing we've been doing for other rounds. Okay, so round three is complete. Now round three is the round that you'll repeat for the rest of your square. And I just want to point out before we move on, that you're going to do the same thing for every round. You're going to slip stitch over to that first corner space. But if you notice, our next round has two sides. So this time you'll do corner, side, side, corner, side, side, corner, side, side, corner, side, side, and then you're back to where you started. The round after that will be corner, side, 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 corner, side, 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 corner, and so forth. So you'll just do the same thing, round three, but you'll be adding more sides as your square grows in height and width, okay? So just keep repeating round three, and then we'll rejoin in just a moment and move on to the next section. Just working those last stitches of our square, we're gonna join with a slip stitch to close. I wanted to show you my square because last week I talked about making one that was a women's small. So we have our square here, and I have done, let me just zoom out a little bit, I have done 19 rounds on mine, and my square is about 20 inches across and 20 inches tall. Now, when you're making your squares, now before we move forward and talk about uh, sizing a little bit more, let's um, fasten this off real quick. So what we're gonna do is grab our scissors and cut the yarn, wrap yard around hook, and bring it through the loop. 
Now, as you can see, I have a little bit of yarn left. I didn't have quite enough to go around uh, another round on that. Um, so I got about, with my five millimeter hook and my personal tension and this particular yarn, I got the 20 inches. So just to give you an idea about that. Now, when you're making your square, you want to kind of hold it up to yourself. And we're going to treat this as the top for now. But this will be the shoulders, which will seam. This will be the neck opening, which will sort of slouch down a little bit. Um, but you want to make sure that when you hold it up to yourself that the bust area is uh, and the shoulder area is going to be covered without pulling it too tight and stretching it. I had less rounds on mine and I, I kind of held it up to myself and it was a little bit uh, snug so I added a few more rounds. It can be a little bit loose and drapey, that's okay. And that's why um, we're going to start our second square, which I've already started here. We're going to start our second square with our second skein of yarn. However, like I mentioned last week in our supply video, um, we have this third skein as a cushion. So if you need to extend, extend your uh, shirt in width and height, you know, you have this extra. Um, if you need to extend it more, um, you can uh, use more than three skeins of this. But um, also keep in mind, we'll need a little bit of yarn for seaming, which this is more than enough that I had from this skein. Not quite enough to do another round, but enough to seam. And we're also, as an option, you can add, we're going to add like a bottom portion of this to sort of extend it more into like a tunic looking style. That is optional, so you could use this third for your square as well. So it's really flexible how you want to kind of work the yarn, but um, we're going to make two of these granny squares now. So I already started my second one. I have my first one down, so make two granny squares of the same size. Now again, mine was 20 by 20 inches, and I did uh, 19 rounds uh, of my granny square. Uh, so make sure that your second square mimics what you've done in your first granny square because we're going to be lining them up, sandwiching together, seaming everything up, and then going from there, okay? So this week we're going to make our two squares, uh, two nice big granny squares. Hold them up to yourself. Make sure everything fits properly. And, and when you do it and you hold it up to yourself, make sure it also can wrap around you a little bit too. Um, so just kind of work work with that. And then we're going to rejoin next week and we're going to learn how to seam everything together and we're going to add this optional bottom if you'd like to do that as well. So two more things I wanted to mention. Be sure, if you haven't already, to join our Facebook group and our Ravelry group. That's our Cal community of makers. So you can hop on and see what everybody's doing. Everybody loves to show off their work. It's such a fun, positive place to hang out. So definitely join those groups if you haven't done that already. And if you're on social media, use the hashtag FiberfluxCal to share your work as well. Everybody loves to see. And a lot of times I'll share it too um, if I'm feeling organized, <laughs> to be honest. But, um, you know, I love sharing people's work as well. So use that hashtag and um, we can see what everybody's doing. So that's all for this week. And just keep working on your granny squares because next week we're going to seam them together and we're going to have some beautiful spring t shirts to wear and handmade and beautiful. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks again.